So coming up with a brand or product name can sometimes be really difficult. So when I was brainstorming for an upcoming brand and product line extension that I came up with, my typical brainstorming sessions just weren't working. So I took to the internet to find one of the best naming tools. And in this video, I show what that tool is, how to use it and how to find a brand product name and even a logo in literally minutes. Let's go. What is up guys? Welcome back to heist the YouTube channel where we deep dive into topics related to e-commerce and selling on Amazon FBA. So whether you're in the infancy of starting a brand, you're starting a new brand, or you're coming up with new product names, in the physical products game, the name is everything. You've gotta find a name that aligns with your customer base, that creates the brand vibe and identity you're looking for, and it can't conflict with existing trademarks, and you really wanna find a good URL. So recently I had a new product line extension that's really gonna become actually its own brand off of one of my sporting goods brands, and frankly my usual tricks around brainstorming and coming up with ideas were leading to a dead end. So I hit up Google, and there's a lot of these naming tools, AI-based naming tools that are out there, and I wanted to give them a crack and see if I could find one that worked for coming up with a name for this new product line. And I found a really, really cool one. So without further ado, let's dive into my computer. We're gonna actually find a brand name and a logo that we like. We're gonna find a product name that we like. And I'm gonna show you within the United States how you can check to see if there's a conflict with trademarks. So let's jump into my computer. All right, so drum roll. The site in question we're gonna be digging around today is called namelix.com, N-A-M-E-L-I-X. Dot com. Literally just found it from a Google search, gave it a test run, and it's pretty dang badass. So what we're gonna do first is pretend that we're trying to create a name for a home goods brand. Uh, and let's just assume that we're looking at more modern and or Scandinavian furniture as an example. And we've racked our brains, we maybe found a couple we like, but maybe there was URL conflicts or trademark conflicts, and we're back to square one and we can't find a damn name. Well, we're gonna go ahead and show what this looks like in that scenario. So all I'm gonna do here is come in and just select modern home goods and just go ahead and hit generate. You can look at brand keywords, you can have a random selection or you can have a name style if you want to come up with specific non-English words or funky names, etc. I'm just gonna go with randomness and I'm gonna select medium randomness. You can do less random or really high. Uh, it's gonna give you different spreads of different ideas. So I'm just gonna go down with medium, hit generate. And what's really cool is it's gonna generate names related to those keyword search terms that we came up with. And some of them are really different uh, and really unique. The other cool thing is, is that you'll see here, there's a bunch of different logos. You can actually select and buy and purchase uh, a logo if you actually like the look of the logo and the name uh, that they've come up with here. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. I've actually done this search already, so I'll kind of give you an idea of the ones that I liked, but you can kind of just see here, like a lot of different ideas, a lot of different logo concepts, some unrelated to home goods and probably aren't gonna be a fit at all, uh, and some that are pretty pretty dang cool. So there's one here that I actually really like, which is called Fairhouse. So it kind of plays on that new, sustainable, modern, Obviously with house in there, it's gonna to tie to the product line extension of home goods. So I really dug this one. So let's say that I like the name. Um, maybe I love this logo that they have here first, but I can also scroll through all the different logo options that they have and find one that makes sense for my brand and what I'm looking to do. And here's actually one that I think is pretty cool. It's kind of got unique typeface. I like the tie-in on modern, which again aligns with the type of products that we may create. So I could actually purchase this, I could save it, I could edit it. Uh, and change some of the dynamics. I could click on that ideas button. It's gonna give me a bunch of different color options here so I could find one that may work. Kind of dig this, right? It's kind of got a neutral palette. So I could again come in here and I could save that one there. So we've got a brand name and we've got a decent logo uh, and we could be off to the races. But one of the things you're gonna wanna do is just to make sure that in the country that you're looking to sell the goods in, at least initially, that there's not a conflict with an existing trademark. So I just typed in USTPO, assuming that I'm selling in the US, which is usually where I start. If you go to this uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office here, the USPTO.gov. If I come up here to trademarks and click on that, I can then go search the TESS, which is really the database of any registered or pending or expired trademarks. And I'm just gonna do a basic word search here. And all I'm gonna do is just type in Fairhouse. And you'll see here, if it comes up with this, the no TSS records, it basically means that nobody's filed that name under any category whatsoever, which is good news. 
This is a great preliminary scrub. You may want to actually bring in an IP attorney if you're really concerned about any conflicts. But this search revealed nothing. I'm feeling actually pretty good about the name Fairhouse. But let's say that you came up with a name like Pottery Barn, which we obviously know is a pretty famous retailer in the US. We click on that and we're going to see all of these active trademarks if there's a hit on the word that you're looking for. But here's something to keep in mind. Let's say as an example that my idea for a product was Pottery Barn and I was doing a pest control product. It's unlikely that Pottery Barn has registered Pottery Barn for the category of chemicals or pest control. So what you can do if the name that you came up with is same as something that's registered or very similar is you can actually come in here and check the status. So I'm just going to click on the live Pottery Barn. And then this is all of the different goods that Pottery Barn has registered for that term. And if the category you're actually looking to make your trademark for is not one of these, you can still potentially get that name for a trademark. Again, if you've got confusion, hit up an IP attorney, usually for about 500 to 1,000 bucks, somebody can submit this for you and do some research. But I like to do a quick nitty gritty check when I come up with a brand name. All right, so let's come back here to Namelix and actually come up with a product line name or a product name. So sometimes you obviously have to have a brand name, which is really, really important but you may want to come up with a unique name for the actual product that you're coming up with so it's not generic, so that it stands out, and so you can build a brand around the product itself. So let's say, for example, we're selling on Amazon and we've got a kid's soccer net. So let's just pick soccer net kids, let's generate that. I'm gonna stick with randomness and medium here, generate it, and then again, much like the brand name, it's gonna come up with a bunch of different ideas here, and it may give us a unique insight into how to name our actual product. So this is one that I already searched as well, but let's just kind of scroll down here and see what they come up with you can see all these names some of them might jump out at you as something like yeah that's a damn good name this kiddio is kind of cool kiddler is kind of neat but i scrolled down here a little bit further and the one i actually think is pretty cool is kid field right so again aligns with the customer archetype the parent buying it's probably going to think it's cool i don't want to just have a generic soccer net for kids i may want to have a kid field soccer net which stands out a lot, especially in marketplaces like Amazon, where there can tend to be a sea of sameness and a lot of sellers that don't really have a really good brand. So I'm gonna go back to trademark search here again and just check real quick on Kidfield, just in case I wanna trademark this actual name for the product. I just go ahead and hit search. And again, no records exist, which is another really good sign that at least in the United States, no one has registered this trademark at all. And if they had, I could check to see if they were in soccer equipment or sporting nets or sporting goods to see if there's a conflict. All right, guys, so that's it. Quick, nitty gritty, to the point. And I hope that this new tool uncovers some new ideas for when you want to name your next brand or when you want to name your next product line. If this is your first time here and you like this kind of content, you like the vibe, go ahead and subscribe to Heist down below. We drop videos like this every single Monday. Would love to have you here as part of the community. If you've been here before or you're an active subscriber, thanks for coming back. It really does mean a lot. And until next week, go ahead and check out this video that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you're going to like. Cheers, guys.